know him and live in him. Let's our reading from I read from New Living Translation. However, I might be interchanging with King James Version. Know him and live in him. Amen. You know, somebody might ask me if I start reading. Why living in him? You know, we are called Christians. And the essence of us being called Christians is because it was a name that was to change you. He said, we know that those who have become part of God's family do not make practice of sin. For God's son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot get his hold, his hands on them. 19. We know that we are children of God, and that the world around us is under the power and control of the evil one. 20. We know that the Son of God has come and know the true God. Sorry, verse And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we are in God because we are in His Son. I want you to pay attention to that 20 mm. because that would be the, one of the, 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 the key things where we go. We know that we are in God. We know that we are in the true God and we know that we are in God because we are in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God and he is the eternal life. Amen. Verse 21. Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your life. Amen. And in King James, he said, take, keep, take, keep away from idols. Know him and live in him. You see, looking at this preacher, I, I, I want to go back to King James in 18. He said, we know that whosoever is born of God sinned not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. He that begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. You know, when we look at this, it tells us that we know that whosoever that is born of God sins not. The essence is. What does it mean to be born of God? And what does the scripture tell us? It says it sins not. Does it mean that as Christians, as people of God, as people in him, that we don't miss the mark? <coughs> or does it mean that we are not living in sin? I believe it tells us that we are not living in sin. Mm -hmm. We are people that are born of God, Amen. and we are no longer living in sin. Amen. Sin has no hold over our lives. Amen. You know, I want to look at 1 John 3, 9. It helps us, it's the same thing, those that are born of God. 1 John 3, 9 tells me, Whosoever is born of God do not oh, commit sin. sin, for his seed... For his seed does what? Remain it in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. It's, it, it's, it's, it tells us like a child that is born of the father has the gene of the father. Yeah. And that seed that is telling us is the seed of God. Because if you are born of God through Christ Jesus, the seed that you have is no longer the seed of your biological father. Amen. You have been transformed to another lineage. Yes. And that's why in the book of John 3, 8, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, Jesus was telling him that except a man be born again. And Nicodemus was saying, how can one be born again? Yes. 
And Jesus was looking at him and said, you are a teacher, a great teacher, an intellectual person. That you don't even know what it means. You know, it brings me to something I have to jump ahead of myself. But I will come back to that. It's just to understand that being born of that seed makes you an inheritor mm. of the seed of God. Oh, yeah. of, the, of the spiritual seed that gives you the ability mm. to resist sin. Mm. Sinning as a child of God is a choice. That's true. And because it's a choice, the spirit of the Lord will talk at our heart that we will still do what we feel we want to do. Yeah. However, some, some sin, even though they are choices, they are reflex. Because the nature has not really been dealt with. Mm. You have not really surrendered the nature of man to that of God, to God yeah. for you to take up the nature of God. Yeah, and in this verse 18, I want you to pay attention to me. It, it said that the seed in the, uh, 139, John 139 said that the seed remained in him. Because that seed will never go. It's still there. It remains in you to tell you to go from left to right, from right to left. That's good. And going back to that 18, he said, we know that whosoever that is born of God, sin it not. And that's why he tells us. And we, we, we understand that Jesus came to live a life of an, exa an exemplary life that we might emulate. We understand that Jesus the Bible said, even though was, he was God, but he took the form of a human being. He took the form of a man. The Bible tells us he, 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 he resisted sin. Not so shaky. He was tempted like every other person. That he didn't fall into sin. Yes. He was hungry like every other person. He didn't even see why he was hungry. He was tired like every other person. But the Bible said for the glory that was set before him. He endured all the things like cross. Because the cross, as, I, as, I, as, I'm, as I'm meant to understand, is not just that particular cross. And that's why Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 9, that anyone that should follow him should carry their cross and follow him. Yeah. So when he went to that cross, that was the ultimate cross. He endured the cross. The shame for the glory. That verse in Jesus, we know that whosoever is born of God, sinner not, but he is begotten of God, keep it and keep it himself. You see, the thing that keeps him is not himself. It is God, the seed that is in him, that keeps him. Whoa. Because on our own self, we cannot decide. And that's why the Bible tells us that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in a man that walketh to, di that direct, to direct his step. And the Bible says that the Lord to correct us in his own justice Not and mercy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because when you look at it, it is the seed that remains in us that bears witness that we are the children of God. Oh, no, no, no. That bears witness that we are not supposed to sin. And here, he said, that a seed, that, and the wicked one touched him not. You know, when you are looking at this, he said, the wicked one will not touch him. How will the wicked one touch a person that lives in him? Oh, that moves in him? That works in him? How can the, legal, the, the wicked one touch somebody that says, submit to God, resist the yeah, devil, yeah, and yeah. the devil will flee from you? Yes. How can the wicked one touch the person that is walking in love? 
He says that perfect love casts out all fear. He said that the wicked man touches him. If, if you are loving, if you are walking in love, if you are somebody that has totally submitted to God, you begin to resist the devil. They cannot, the devil cannot touch you. If you him, you live and move and have your being. How can the devil touch you? It's just like looking at you telling yourself that you are clothed with the glory of the Lord. You are clothed with the umbrella of God's glory. And you say that the devil that was created will come and snatch you. You know, Jesus said, that my father is greater than him, but he cannot snatch anyone away from us. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, any one of us 18, hallelujah, he said, keep your hands up, and the wicked one touched him not. Hallelujah. The devil cannot touch you. Amen. But you have to walk in principle yes. according to the word of the Lord. Let's go to 19. I, I, I'll make sure that I'm, I don't overshoot my time. Verse 19. And it reads, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Thank you. You see, we know that we are of God. Hallelujah. Like we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. You know, how do we know that we are of God? You see, when you look at what I've already said, when you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 1 John 1 3 tells us that was John saying. He was talking about what they have seen, what they have heard. And that thing that they have seen and they have heard, they are communicating. Those things that they have seen and they have heard. Let's look at it because let me 1 John 1 3. But we can read 1 John 1 to 3. Uh, 1 John 1 to 3. He said, That which is from the beginning, which we have heard, that which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. Let's go. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, he said, declare we unto you, that you might also join us. I use the word, I put the word join us. To have fellowship. Have fellowship with what? With who? That we might, you might join us to have fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, in that verse 19, it tells us, and we know that we are of God. That means we are proceeding out of the Father. We are the offshoot, offshoot of God himself. We are born of God. Because if you are of him, you are born. The seed is in you. You don't have the seed of your biological father. You have the seed of God. And that's why John said that anyone that is born of God overcometh the that's world. Right, that's right, that's right. And he goes on to say that this is the victory that does what? They overcome the world, even our Amen. faith, because we have put our faith in Christ Amen. Jesus. That 19 says, we are. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. You know, I was looking at this 
And it took me to, I think, 1 Corinthians 6. Is that 1 Corinthians 6, 17? No, Romans 6, 15 and 17. <coughs> it says in that Roman, that whom you yield yourselves uh -huh, unto as a slave or as a servant. To that person you become the servant of. If you yield yourself to sin, you become a servant of sin. However, if you yield yourself to God, you become a servant, a slave of God. The question is, the whole world are in rebellion to God, from God. And they have yielded themselves to who? To the evil one. Am I making, am I making yes, sense? He said, and we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. You see, because we are of God, there's a difference. Because we've yielded ourselves to God. But the world have yielded themselves to sin, to the wicked one. And they are now the servant of sin or the devil. Why? I want to look at somewhere, John 8, 44. When they were attacking Jesus, and Jesus began to rebuke them that they are like their father, the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. Can someone look ahead of me? Yes, sir. John 8, 44. And it reads, yes, please. And it reads, it says, You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. Praise Hallelujah. He said, he said that it, when you, you, see, you see, in this 19, he said, and that wicked, uh, no, no, 19, he said, and the world lieth in wickedness. That means the world lies in wickedness. When you look at what is going on in this world, mm. it's all wickedness. Why is it all wickedness? There are wars and rumors of wars. There are still war going on today between, I don't know, almost all the nations of the world. There's one thing, one way or the other, you will see war and you see wickedness. Ukraine and Russia, they are this war. Why should they go into war? And it's affecting the whole world. In Africa, there are patches, wars everywhere. Mm. And this is where how the devil is murdering people. The Bible says he is a murderer. There's wickedness <coughs> everywhere. People are killing people for money, kidnapping. People are killing people because they want to take their position. Mm. There is deception everywhere. Yes. And everything that you hear them saying is lie. Mm. It's all deception. You can imagine in the book of Acts chapter 5. When Ananias and Sapphira came and lied yes. to Peter. That they have brought all that they sold. The money. And Peter realized that they were deceivers. And Peter realized that they did not only lie to himself, they lied to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the devil entered them and connived with the devil and they lied even in the kingdom of God. I wonder how many people that are hearing me today and that you are asking yourself, are you lying in wickedness? Shake yourself. Are you murdering? Are you deceiving? Are you fraudulent? Are you killing people? Are you taking bribe? You see, in Ephesians 2, verse 2, the Bible tells us that the people that are not in Christ, before we came, 
we were all walking in our ears, following the leading of the prince of the air. The prince of the power of the air. He said, we're in, in the past, in the time past, that you walked according to the course of this world. Mm. The world today is lying in wickedness because they are following the course. They are being orchestrated, directed, instructed, and led by the prince of the power of the earth. And why am I saying this? You know, I said we are looking at knowing and living in him. He said there's a difference between those that know their God and those that live in their God. Mm. You can know him, but you are not living, living in, in him. him. But today we are looking at ability for us to understand that we are called to know. Not only knowing, we are called to live in him. Because it's only when you live in him, will you be able to overcome the powers of the air. The attacks of the enemy. The angels of God will be able to carry you and bear you off, lest you dash your feet against the stone. 20, we'll pay attention to 20 because I think that's, uh, I believe that's one of the things that we spend some of the time here in. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding. I want you to pay attention. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. He has come. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He has given us an understanding. Let's continue. That we might know him, know who? Him that is true. And we are in him that is what? True. That we might know him that is true. Is that not what he says? And that we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So, the essence is about us knowing him that is true. Understanding that we are in him that is true. Oh, yeah, yeah. And not only him, we are in his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, that is the true God and eternal life. You know, John 17 tells us, Jesus was saying that we might know him, the true God, and his son whom he has sent. He said, that is eternal life. So, but here, it goes further to tell us it's not only about knowing him, And knowing Jesus, it's also about living in him here. Because Jesus has gone to glory. Amen. So Jesus now, we need to live in him. While he was on earth, we cannot live in him. Because he was residing on earth as a man. So here is increasing. Eternal life is not only about knowing God, the true God. And Jesus Christ, who I'm said, eternal life is now knowing them and living in death. Oh, oh, oh. Knowing them and living in them. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we look at that, there are things I want us to see in this passage. You see, how can we know him? John and Paul in 1 Corinthians 5, 16 said that many of them that knew him in the flesh. He said, let them, not know, let them no longer know him in the flesh. Let them now know him in the spirit. So the, 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 when we look at this, 
He said, and we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding. That understanding can only come in the spirit. It's a spiritual understanding. And that's why Ephesians 1.17 tells us that the Father God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It has, has to be knowing God, knowing Christ is a revelation. And that's why we desire that we will have a revelation of him. Some people might say an encounter. Because unless the God we serve gives you a glimpse of his revelation, you have nothing to run with. Oh. Somebody might say, why? You can go for evangelism because that's a general call to win souls. But what will be your core message? Your core message without an encounter is a general message. And God, the Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy what? The works of the dead. So he has a purpose to destroy the evil works. Yes, yes. And that's why he came, lived, and died without sin to pay the price of sin on our lives. He became a preparation for our sin. He became the ransom that ransomed us from the hand of the wicked. He said that Jesus has come that he might give us an understanding to know him. You know, in the book of John 14, Thomas were asking Jesus, show us the Father. Let's look at it. Verse 6, verse 5, or that, John 14. He was saying that they should show them the Father. And Jesus was saying, have you got it? Have you been with us for such a long time and you are still asking, sure, go on, go on. John 14, verse 5, and, and Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how we can know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known the Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Thank you, that's it. You see, you see, these were the disciples that were with Jesus. They knew Jesus in the flesh. However, they didn't have a revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave them a revelation that how come that you are saying, show us the Father. I've been with you for all these times and you are saying, they show us the Father. Don't you know that whoever that sees me that has seen the, the Father. Father. Does then that mean that the Father is the human form of Jesus? Yes. No. Because Jesus lived exactly and operated the characteristics of God the Father. And that's why today we don't need to look at pictures of people that we say this is Jesus. In John chapter 4, Jesus was saying that those that were worship the Father will worship him in what? In spirit, spirit and, and in truth. truth. And many times people have idols of pictures depicting Jesus, some black, some yellow, some, some Caucasian, some anything, and they say it is Jesus. It's not Jesus. Everyone that has had an encounter with Jesus cannot put a face. Oh, oh, they put a light. Yes. They put a love. But they don't put faces. The Bible said that Jesus came to reveal unto us the God, the funny true God. How? Because he said that everything that he did, he saw is what he saw the Father doing. Yeah. You want to see the Father in Jesus? Look at his character. Mm. Look at his doings. 
Look at the things that he said. Not look at the physical. Because the pictures that we are depicting today are pictures of human being. It's just like a picture of the person that, uh, that performed the person of the Christ and some of them will put them and say, this is Jesus. There are people that are doing their work to end their money. They are living. Yes. And in this 20, where are we? 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we might know that we might know him that is true. Jesus has given us a spiritual understanding. He is the one that reveals the Father. He said, no one has seen the Father. No one has seen the Son but the Father. And no one has seen the Son but the Father. And him whom the Son chooses to reveal. Mm. Any encounter you have and you see a bodily form, it could be Jesus that, you, that revealed himself to you. Mm. And that's why John and Paul, on his way to Damascus, saw. He encountered Jesus and immediately he realized and he knew that he was Jesus. He had the knowing without being told. And that's why the Bible tells us that we have the anointing of the Holy One. We know all things. You see, when you encounter anything in the Spirit, you will surely know it. Because the knowledge of God is on you, is in you. The Spirit of God will enlighten your darkness and you will see the light and you will understand it. Jesus has come to give us a spiritual understanding. And another thing he does, he wants us to know in this 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we might know him. Amen. Is it just knowing him? It's not just knowing him. It's having a relationship with him. It's a, a, a relationship with the Father. Because if you don't relate with him, you are not in him. Mm. The relationship will cause you to know that in him you live, in him you move, and in him you have your, uh, you have your being. Amen. In relationship will mean, will help you to know that you are born of God. That greater is him that is in you than he that dwells in the world. Your relationship will be able to help you to understand that he is greatest. That he is the one that is higher than every other. Thank you, Jesus. Your understanding and your relationship will cause you to be able to be aware. That if God is for you, who can be against you? He said, he giving us an understanding that we might know He that is true. And we are in Him. He said, when you are Him, you are in union with Him. Imagine if we are going with this awareness that we are in union, in him we live and move and have our day. We have that, you, the, the awareness that Jesus said that we might be one with him as he is one with the Father. That the whole world might know that he is the one that has made us and called us to be his disciples. Because it's a union. Amen. You cannot be one. You only one with your wife immediately. The marriage or the relationship is consumed. But you are not one with that person until you consume mm -hmm. the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible says we should not be unequally yoked. Because whoever you yoke yourself to be, to, that person will become a slave to. He said, God, Jesus is the one that gave us an understanding. An understanding of what? He has given us understanding that we might know him. 
a revelation of him. A revelation of him. We might know him. And also, who is true? That we are in him. That means we are one with him. He said, Jesus in the book of John 10, 30, he said, I and my father are one. We cannot be separated. You see, somebody might say, but Jesus, the person was there. He, that's why he's saying, if you have you seen me, you have seen the father. We cannot be separated. But the thing is this, are you separated with your God? Because he wants you to be in him. Not a theoretical, a mind knowledge, but a revelational knowledge and a relational knowledge that you are in him. him. Knowing and living in him. Knowing and living in him. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we might know him. That is true. That we are in him. That is true. And even in his Son, that is the true God and eternal life. You see, when we're looking at this, and that's why I said pay attention to this one. Because once you've given your life, there's a transaction that has happened. The seed comes to you. And you might not know there is a a physical transaction that has happened, a a spiritual transaction that has happened. The seed has come. However, you continue to know him. Because it's a continuous exercise. To know that you are in him is a continuous exercise. Because if you just come to Christ today, you might not understand how you are in him. But in the spirit, he, the seed remains in you and drives you and opens your eyes not to see. And in that 20 says... That we are, that is even his son Jesus Christ, that is the true God and the eternal life. Amen. And that's why he said, For God so loved, loved the world, world that he gave his only begotten son, son, that whosoever believes in him will not, will not perish, will not perish but will have eternal life, eternal life or everlasting life. You know, I was sharing a scripture with my wife. And that scripture is in John chapter 10, verse 9. But that, to understand it, we look at John 10, verse 7. If anyone finds it, read verse 7, please, to 9. John chapter 7, John chapter 10, verse 7, and it reads, and Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. Thank you. You see, when you look at from 1 to 6, Jesus was using... An allegory of um, a sheep of sheep and dogs, but in from seven to nine, he was telling us that he is now the door of the sheep. That means there's no longer the shepherd; he is the door. And when you give your life to Christ, you enter through him, because the Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. So as you enter there, you've entered. You don't come in and live on your own. Mm-hmm. You remain in that nine, in nine, he said, through me, through that door, you come in and take and make, get your father, uh, pastor in and out. Okay. So what is happening in that verse nine is, if we know that we have entered through salvation, oh. the seed remains in us. So everything we do 
we are diligent in him. And that's why Galatians 2 verse 20 tells us that we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless we live, yet not us, not I that live, but Christ that lives in us. That's good, that's good. The life that we now live in the flesh is by what? The faith of the Son of God. In the Son of God that does what? That loved us and gave himself. His life. Everything for us. So it's no longer your life that you're living. And that's why Jesus said that whatever he does is what he sees his father doing. Can we come to a point, and that's why he's, he, wants, he wants us to come to that point where we know and receive a revelation of him spiritually. We are working with him relationally and we are in union with him knowing that it is no longer us doing, but whatever we do, people will see us and say, Christ doing this. Amen. Let's look at 21. We are still in 1 John 5, 21. He said, little children, keep yourself from idol. What is an idol? In living translation, it, tra it, it, it helps us to understand a little bit of He said, keep away from anything that might take place. Take the place of God yes, in your yes, yes. heart, in your life. An idol is not just. A graven image that you look at and people worship. And I do is everything and anything that can keep your heart, your life, your emotion away from God. Because if you surrender anything, if you if you give anything your heart then you become a servant to that thing. Keep yourself away from idols. You know, how can we do that? You know, Jesus was asked in Matthew 22, I think um, I wrote 37. He was asked of the greatest commandment. Oh, oh, oh. He answered and said, the greatest commandment is for them to hear, O Israel. Knowledging that the Lord thy God is one. And telling them that they should love him, the God, the one God, with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul. He said, that is the first and the greatest commandment. And the issue is, if anything takes the place of God, oh, you love that thing more that than God. God. That is true. If your children take the place of God in your life, you love them more than God. If your parents take the place of God in your life, you have loved them more than God. If your car, if your house, if your jewelry, your clothing, your, your friends, the parties, that you attend. Mm. Your work. Your business. Or anything that you can think of. If they take the place of God in your life. They have become an idol. Yes, and Jesus, the Bible says here, keep yourself. Keep your heart away oh, from idols. So, knowing and living in him means that at every point in our lives, he should become an idol. If I use the word, if I did invite to come open and close. The one that our soul will delight in. The one that our hearts will delight in. The one that our love will be unto. The one that will take priority in our own lives. Amen. The one that will occupy us. Amen. Living and knowing him. And that's why 
You know, we know that the word of God was made flesh. And the Bible says, we behold that glory. See, that word that became flesh is Jesus. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says, as the Lord was speaking to Joshua, that he should meditate on the word. What is that word? Jesus, that word is still Jesus, Jesus that became flesh. That's right. Day and night. He said, therein lies his sources. And in doing that, he will prosper. The question is, where is your heart is? Oh, sure. The Bible says where your heart is, where your treasure is, is where your heart is. Oh, sure. You cannot say you love God when your heart is. It's not towards him. You cannot say that God is your Lord and Savior, your King, your Redeemer, the one that you live in, when your heart is on another thing. Hmm. You cannot say that God is your healer when you are trusting something else to heal you. Oh, However, I'm not advocating that we shouldn't seek medical attention, but it's God that we use the medical to heal you. It's God that will give the doctors the understanding because your prayer is unto God. It's not unto the medical um, personnel. Your heart is towards God that you will find mercy in his hand. You know, this passage, as I was reading it, it touched me. Mm. You know, in us looking at this, the essence of us knowing and living in Him is us knowing that we have to be obedient to God. Mm. Because if you are obedient to God, you have done all that He needed. When He tells you, you go. Mm -hmm. What He says, you do. Because you are living, moving, and your being is all in him. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. My prayer is that we will go. If we look at the whole of 1 John 3, I want to read it and then close. That 1 John, the whole of 3, the whole of um, five, sorry, one John. Let me just read it and use it to close because I still have one minute. Let me read it. One John five, sorry, one John five from one John five, sorry, I said one John five. He said, whoever, whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God, I'm reading the scripture. And everyone that loveth him, that begetteth, loveth him also that is begotten. If you love Jesus, if you love God, you will love. 1 John 5 from verse 1. He said, by this we know that we love, we love the children of God. So the ability to say that you love God is the ability to determine how you love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandment. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandment and his commandment are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcomes what? The wow. world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Okay. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that what? Jesus Christ <coughs> is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is true. This will be done another time. Or someone can help us with it. He said that the spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. 
If we receive the, wit uh, the witness of men, and the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God had witness in himself that he had believed it. not on, not God, sorry, verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God had the witness in himself. He that believeth not God had made him a liar. Oh. And because he believeth not the record that God gave his son. I want to stop here. See, when you don't believe in Jesus, you make God a liar. Oh, Jesus. Because you don't believe the record that God himself gave. Oh, yes. Jesus. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh. Oh, she got that. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Oh, Jesus. Even before I pray, I want to give an opportunity for those. That the Bible said they lie, that the, the, the word lieth in wickedness. If you are still in the world, that you have not had that revelation of Christ in you, that he paid the price that you could not that he became sin, that you might be righteous in us. Today is the day. The Bible says, Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. When the children of Israel had his voice, they refused him. They refused him, and they all perished in the wilderness. Today is the day. Amen. If there's any of us that will say that they have not made that transition to allow the seed of God to remain in them, I want you to repeat after that. And also those that have made their seed and they've allowed themselves or themselves to be lured out of who they are. And they've allowed their hearts to occupy other things. Even though the seed is still there. But their heart has gone to occupy the devil. Oh. Like the idol. They are now worshipping. They have idols in their heart. Being led by those idols today, Jesus is knocking at the, heart, your heart, the door of your heart, and He wants you to come back to Him. Wherever you ask, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord I ask that that transition will come upon my life. That I will receive the seed that is translated in the spirit to my soul. Today I make you my Lord and my Savior. I repent of my sins. Forgive me and make me a newborn person. I receive today that I am in you, the Son of the living God. Baptize me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Let me pray for everyone that has prayed this prayer. Father, I ask, O Lord, that even as my Lord Jesus prayed, that you keep them by the power that's in your name. Amen. That the enemy will not snatch them. Because you are greater. Amen. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus. That you fill them with your spirit. Yes, Lord. That you uphold them. Yes, Lord. And you keep them secure. Yes, Lord. As many as pray this prayer. Look for a Bible believing church. Around you. And worship God. And get to know him. Walk with him. And be united in him. We love you Jesus. We serve you glorified.